Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Tom Turner. I'm the lead pastor at Praise Family Church in Mobile, Alabama, and I am thrilled and excited that you're joining us for this very special program. We have something that we really think a lot about, and that is the church and how we relate to it. In fact, over the next few weeks, we're gonna be talking about the family business, and it's just how we relate as people of God in the church where God's planned us. We hope you'll be joining us every time. And in fact, if you'd like more information about Praise Family Church, Stay tuned at the end and we'll tell you more about how you can be more connected in what we're doing. Happy summer, everybody. It's that time, isn't it? It's, it's time for, for school to be out. The kids are a little sad about that. Moms are happy today. <laughs> Give it about six days, and they'll be like, when does school start back? We get it. Um, all, I think most everybody's out of school now, and this is Memorial Day weekend. I'm just thankful they get out before Memorial Day and not have to go all summer. So, of course, I don't have kids at home either, so I just get to see my grandkids when it's convenient. So uh, we're glad you're here today. Before we get to the message, you go ahead and turn to Galatians 4 and Ephesians 4. We'll be there in just a minute before I actually start preaching. Y'all can stop my timer because I ain't started yet. Um, that's, just, that's just housekeeping things. But seriously, on Wednesday nights, if you haven't been here, I want to encourage you to join us. Uh, it's a great time. We call it Family Night for a reason because it's for the whole family. We have stuff for kids, for students. Uh, for all ages, and not only that, we also have, on Wednesday nights, have been having PFC men and PFC ladies have been meeting, and we're doing all kinds, just kind of hanging out, doing some fun stuff, and uh, kind of competing on who's doing the best stuff, and, and uh, I don't know what, what all they have planned this, this week, but they won't be sniffing perfume and looking at flowers, That's, they've already done that, so I don't know what the ladies are doing. <laughs> Guys, I want you to be here, because I want to share with you about our upcoming trip to South Africa, I've got the information, just want to tell you a little bit about that. Uh, we've been doing some fun stuff. It'll be a lot of bl it'll be a blast. You'll enjoy it this Wednesday night. So join us from 6:30 to 7:30. It's great, and your kids will enjoy it. And I just encourage you to be a part of that. All right, let's get right to the word. Uh, we've been talking about Club PFC. We'll explain that if you're wondering what in the world we're talking about. Hopefully, uh, you'll get this. If not, I encourage you to go back and maybe watch our past services. This is the fourth week of this, so uh, we want to get right to it. Looking at Galatians chapter four, Galatians chapter four, beginning with verse four. We've read this before, but this is kind of the basis for most of the series. It says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Let's pray. Father, we want to hear from you now. We need your your power, your presence to be with us, Lord. I pray, God, as we focus our attention on you, just speak to our hearts. We open our ears, we open our hearts to receive your engrafted word that we might be changed to be more like Jesus. Lord, that the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, if you agree with that, would you say a great big amen? Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that. So, so we've been talking about this, we've been talking about how God's building a mighty, mighty church, and he's building it with sons. Now remember, sons, that's not about gender or age. You can be old or young, male or female. If you are part of the body of Christ and you've let God plug you in, and Jesus wants to plug you into a certain place in the house, you can serve him as a son and not a slave. Because look, servants serve and sons serve, but the difference, remember, we told you is in heart and motive. I want to serve like a son. Amen. And I'm thankful for sons. In fact, I want to tell you, I'm grateful that I learned about my role in the church as a son. Now, my dad was a pastor, obviously, so I was the son of the pastor. But we were always taught about the importance of how church was not just something we do, but it really was part of our life. It was in all about life. And so as I served God and I, I, I've been to grow up in the church, I never even considered not going to church. When I got to the place where I was grown and I was in college and nobody was around to tell me what to do, I just didn't even think twice about going to a church, getting plugged in, and serving there because that just was in my DNA. Because I want to tell you something, I love this. 
The reason we talk about this is not just because, man, he's got to get some people in here. We've got to get some more money or whatever you think preachers are doing. I want to tell you, I talk about this. I believe this. It's in my DNA, and I want it to be in your DNA because it's in the DNA of this house, that what we do together is just so awesome. we got incredible, incredible people in this house. God has put together a church that's doing great things, but we can do more. And so I'm excited about that. It's fun. I love being part of the church. I hate missing anything we do. I want to be here every time I can because I love you guys. And you do a great thing. And I want everybody to understand when we do this the way God tells us to, it opens the door for all the blessings he has for us. Can somebody say amen? And can somebody say amen loud because you've experienced that? That's what it's really about. And I'm excited about that. So write this down. God is not just building another institution. The church is the body of Christ. We're a living, breathing organism. It's alive. The church is alive. We're called to carry out the purposes of God in this earth. And the cool thing is, this isn't something that brings bondage. See, the devil wants you to think, uh huh, they just want to take all your time. They already don't take all your money, they don't want to take all your time. And the truth is, the Bible tells us that when we serve this way, we get to experience everything God has for us. And it's in this situation, in this circumstance, as we serve together, that we all grow together and we become perfect, not individually, but together we serve the purposes of Christ and we get great things done and we grow. Come on, somebody. So when we find our place, our true place God has for us, what Jesus wants to plant us, we get to enjoy everything God has for us. That's the way to do it. That's what the Bible says. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Somebody should have said amen right there. This is where the blessing is as we serve together. Somebody say amen. Help me out here. Amen. At least humor me if you would. Now, I said we were going to Ephesians 4, so let's go there. Read another passage most of you are probably familiar with that we've read many, many times. And I, I love this passage as well. Um, it tells us a lot about the Bible. And it's, G, it's actually Jesus, uh, Paul talking about how Jesus set up the church. And that's what he's talking about in verse 11 when he says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. Now, we know most people are not in that first group. Most people are in the second group. We talked about saints. You know, a lot of times we think saints are all the dead people. But if you love Jesus, you're a saint. Come on, somebody. How many of you remember Eric Johnson? He's a son of this house. Every time he gets up, what's he always say? Good Good morning, saints. And people laugh at him, but you know, he's got it. That's, that's, you're a saint. Look at somebody and say, you're a saint. And not a hoot at. I mean, that's okay if you're that too, but come on, right? So he said, so, for the, so the fivefold ministry is for the equipping of the saints. And we could have said for the equipping of the sons. We could have done that, right? For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Until we all come to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the uh, Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what we're... That's what we're trying to get to, right? That's, that's our goal. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful prodding. What he's saying is when this plotting is going on by the devil, people that are plugged into the church and growing, they're not caught, they don't get caught up in that junk. They don't get thrown aside by, but because they immaturity, because they don't know, because they are growing in the things of Christ. Amen? But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head Christ. From whom the whole body, listen, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes the growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. That's why I love this. I'm telling you, it's so exciting we get together. And I tell people, and I think they just think I'm just saying it, but I tell everybody, look, we appreciate what you do. I want to tell you something. Every single person who is taking up the mantle of a son and said, whether you're male or female, old or young, what you do when you serve, no matter what your role is in this house, you make us better than we would be otherwise. I mean that. So that's why I'm so excited about this. And I believe with all my heart God plants us where he wants us, that he wants to plant us in a church. And, and so if he's planted you here, then I want to encourage you to get everything God has for you by serving the way you can so that you can get everything God has for you because that's what the Bible tells us, right? And so... Uh, we don't want to serve as hirelings or servants or slaves, different words there, but it all means the same thing. We want to serve as sons, right? Because hirelings just want to get the job done, maybe, right? We said hirelings take off. Remember Jesus talks about that? Hirelings take off when the wolf shows up. Sons hang around, make it happen. Let me ask you something. How are needy people, you know, not, you know needy is not just poor, but any kind of, how are needy people touched by Christ? How does Christ touch needy people? The church. We, we, we say all the time we're his hands, right? 
So here's what I always think about this. This happened several years ago. It was after we were in this building, but we've been in here quite a while. And we were here on Wednesday night, and we had someone who actually had a really big need that was part of this church and had been faithful, served in this house. They had a, a financial crisis that took place. Nothing they had done wrong. Just, I mean, you know, that's just life happens sometimes. And God laid it on my heart just to mention it that night and say, hey, let's see what we can do for him. So I mentioned it, didn't tell who it was. I said, look, we've got somebody that's part of this church that needs help. And if you feel led, let God lead you. And we're going we're to bless them with an offering to try to help them. What it was, they were about to lose their house. And it was a lot of money. I'm like, you know, so I'm just going to try to help them. The end of that story is all the money came in and we saved their house, right? That was pretty cool. And they, and they just stayed faithful here and kept giving. But the, the point in my story is this, that when I was telling that, one of the other ladies in the church at the time, she's long been gone, but uh, she, she was sitting there and she looked at her friend and says, well, I wish they'd do that for Jane Doe. Obviously, Jane Doe's not real, you know, not the name. And, and she said, what do you mean? She goes, well, Jane Doe's got problems. I don't see the church helping her. And the lady she said it to goes, well, I'll tell you what. You give the first hundred, I'll give the second hundred. And she goes, oh, no, I don't want to do it. I want the church to do it. That's kind of like when somebody says, I think the government should. Come on, somebody. You know, somewhere somebody said that this is a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Yet we got this mentality that that's a bunch of people in Washington that, can, that, that have everything. And the truth is, I don't know if you knew this. Here's an economic lesson. They're getting it out of your pocket. How many of you know that for real? I was talking to a man the other day, and his son finally started working, and he got his first, pay, first paycheck, and he said, how come they took all this money out? He says, now you know what we've been talking about, paying taxes, buddy. Welcome to the real world. Well, we don't pay taxes, right, in the church. We do tithe and give, but here's the deal. We are the church, so the way Jesus uses us is we're his hands to help people like that, to reach out. And says, and the church needs to do that. We need to say, we need to do it. That's what a son says, right? Sons say, we got this. Highland goes, they need to, right? And so we don't want to serve that way. So the members of the body of Christ, and I'll tell you something else it does. And I put this in your notes because this is so vastly important to understand. The reason I'm excited about this, the reason I'm so adamant about this, because listen, to live outside the will of God puts us in danger. How many of you know that's true? But to live in his will will make us dangerous. Heaven loves it hell hates it because the devil knows when churches begin to walk like sons they begin to fulfill god's purposes together he is doomed he knows when we begin to think like sons and work and serve in the church that every time one new person says i want to be part of that church it really does make us exponentially better i'm telling i don't say that lightly i mean it with all my heart every single person who serves here every son in this house makes us better. In fact, Psalm 127, we've read it every week. We didn't read it today, but it says that those sons are like arrows in the hand of a warrior. They're the reason we can accomplish things for the kingdom of God. That's why we're storming the gates of hell and kicking it in, because Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, and we're his body, and we're being used by him in a mighty way. See, servants think they're mature. And you know what servants really are, hirelings or slaves, when it comes to the body of Christ? They're Pharisees. The reason Jesus was on the Pharisees, not because they were just stuck in the Old Testament, is because they didn't understand relationship. In fact, the problem was that Jesus didn't tell down the law. People say, Jesus was against the law. No, he wasn't. He never spoke against the law. He spoke against all the traditions they came up with. You know how the church would come up with all these rules that have nothing to do with the word? And that's what he was talking about, all the the thousands of pages of traditions they had developed that they were sending people to hell over. And he's saying, you're like whitewashed tombs full of dead men's bones. You're not really helping anybody. You're making them twice the son of hell you are to the ones who thought they were mature because they were serving like hirelings or slaves. But to sons, he says, I can use that. I can do something powerful. In fact, the proof of a mature church, write this down to your notes. Every part doing its share. That's what verse 16 tells us, right? We just read it. When every part, the, the more people that do their part, that come to this house and do their part, the more mature we become. Now, listen to me. I want to be real clear. That doesn't make anybody second class in our eyes. We're not saying if you come to this church, you can come till Jesus comes. You can come forever and never serve here. We're not going to love you any less. The reason I'm sharing this is because I'm trying to beg you because I need you. I'm trying to let you know that this is good for you. It's better for all of us. It's better for you. I'm telling you, it's just, once you get a hold of this, it's going to change your life. I was just talking to one of our members the other day, and he was telling me, he said, you know, when I first came here, 
I, at first I was like, I don't know. I've never been involved in church before. He said, I want to tell you something. When I started serving, I didn't think my part was important, but I've learned what a blessing it is to be part of a house that loves God, where people are working together. It has made my family stronger. That's a good testimony. That's why we're doing this, because I believe this with all my heart, not because I think we're better than everybody. So when we talk about Club PFC is exclusive. We don't mean that in a snobby way. What we mean is everybody's invited, but the Bible says the way to hell is wider than the way to heaven, not because God wants it to be, but because people choose that. And I'm just inviting you to choose to be a part of what God's doing here. You know, throughout the Gospels, we hear Jesus saying, you know, forget about yourself. Don't worry about pursuing things and money. and fame. Let that go, and you'll actually get more. In fact, many of you thought of Matthew 6, right there, many people can quote it. Here's, here it is in a paraphrase. We put it in your notes, basically. Here's what Jesus is really saying. Seek my kingdom in my righteousness first, then I'll add all the other things that you seem so desperate to find. He says, I know what you need. But he even says, I'll bless you not only in what you've given up, but I'll even give you more. But you've got to serve me first. I want to take care of you. I want you to take care of my house. I want you to take care of the ministry I've called you to. Not everybody's called to full-time ministry. That's what, how many times have you heard that? But that's not true. I've heard that tons of times. Well, yeah, everybody is called to first time, full-time ministry. If you're a Bible-believing child of God, amen? But some people make the vocation that way. God might be using you in real estate or, or, or lawn maintenance or whatever, but you're called full-time to ministry. He's just giving you different ways to pay your bills. But he says, I'll take care of you. Come on, somebody. We want to plug in and do it his way. That's important. So what we're talking about is this kind of selflessness that God wants to use to build a mighty church, a strong church that's there to make a difference. You know, our reputation in this community is so important. That's why I say all the time, the most important thing most people need to know about this church, what makes us different, and I'm not saying we're better than anybody else, but you know what will make us stand out? If they know we love them. That, that, that church loves people. Now, I believe a lot of churches love people, but a lot of the world doesn't believe that, right? They're judging about the other things they've seen. So God's building us because we love, we serve together. And I want nothing more. That's what sons do. I want nothing more to see the kingdom of God advance. I want to fulfill his purposes. That's what God's called us to. And every son in this house feels the same way. Every old man and young lady and student, whatever you are as a son, that's our goal, to see the kingdom of God advance, amen, and serve his purposes. That's the greatest testimony there ever was. And Jesus had a priority principle, so he's teaching us this. This is what he's saying. When your priorities are out of line, you cannot find true fulfillment. How many people try that? Maybe you tried it before. You tried other things, and, and it was empty. It didn't help. All the fame, money, whatever it was you were after, popularity, whatever. It's not fulfilling. That's why God uses sons to build his church, why he wants to get them to understand that his kingdom comes first. Write this down. Satan is the second highest bidder for our souls. And this is a tragic statement, but true. But most people award theirs to him. He didn't pay the highest price for you. Jesus did. You don't have to give yourself to the enemy. The Bible says he came to what? Kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, I came to give you life, life more abundantly. Not just abundant, but more full. Not just a good enough life. Most people want just good enough. Jesus says, I got better than good enough. I've got the best for you. But you have to plug into my system. You have to sell out to me. We have to want to do that. No matter what we try to do, no matter what we try to achieve or gain, if it isn't the kingdom of God first, we're selling our souls to the second highest bidder. So that's why I'm so adamant about this. A church can't grow that's full of hirelings and servants and people who think it's just a job. It takes sons. Those who are committed first to the Lord and his purposes. Romans 12, 2, one of my favorite passages in the Bible. I want to read it from the Passion Translation because I know some people talk about that's not a great study Bible and all. And we're not studying this one, but it's a great phraseology the way it's used here. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. How, how appropriate is that today, Right? Every time you talk to somebody, they're talking about what they heard somewhere else or somebody said. My thing is, what did Jesus say? Stop uh, uh, imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eye. Come on, that should be all of our prayer. God, I want you to transform me. God is about completely transforming us. Any gospel 
and I, I say it with quotes like this, air quotes, any gospel that claims you don't have to make any changes when you come to Jesus is a lie. The good news is the greatest change you don't have to make, he makes. But there are things he begins to call us. And as you go, the longer you do this, how many of you know the longer you served him, there's been some things he asked you to change later that maybe he didn't ask you to change at first. Because you're getting closer, and he's, he's, the, he's, he's, he's calling you, and he's, he's commanding, and he's teaching, and he's helping you. Come on, somebody. Everything God calls us to is a help, even though the enemy wants to think it's not, right? Look, you're not just changed on the outside, right? That's, that's, that's the problem with legalism. It just talks about an outside change. God puts his image in you. It's when your image, my image is in you, things are going to change. I remember years ago hearing a song, and I, I, it kind of... I don't know if it was a country song. I don't think it was it wasn't a Christian song. I don't think maybe they were playing it as a Christian song. I can't remember, but I heard it, and I'd never heard it before. I heard the, the I've heard the, the thoughts behind it, but I never heard that song. And I couldn't tell you who did it or where, what it came from. But it was about having a God-sized hole in your heart and your life or whatever, and you know only God can fill it. Have you heard that before? You heard that phrase? Do you know it's not true? <laughs> it comes from the twelve-step pro- programs, like. AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, which was the first one, and there's a lot like that now. And they, they do the 12 steps, and, and one of the things is you got to find a spiritual higher power, is what they say now. They used to say God, and some of them still do, but that was find a higher, higher power to fit into your life because you've got to find something. And they got, they're on to something, but the problem is they're teaching that you need to add God to your life to fix your life. That's not what God calls us to. Huh? Are you with me? That's not what he calls us to. Write this down. Here's the point. Listen, God's not a hole filler. Do you hear me? God's not a hole filler. Write this down. God is not the last piece of the puzzle. He's the one who painted the picture in the first place. <laughs> he painted the picture. He, he, he didn't ask for a hole in your life. He asked for your whole life. And that's why he calls us to a church like this, say, I want you to serve. And you say, well, it doesn't seem that important that I'm, you know, whatever it is, fill in the blank. You know, I'm, I'm just parking cars, or I'm just, I'm just greeting people. I'm just helping people find seats. I'm just making coffee. I'm just changing diapers. Let me tell you something. There's no just doing anything. It's all about being sons of the house and taking your whole life and giving it to God. And I want to put a QR code on the wall right now. You guys, I know you got that back there. Would you throw that up there, that slide that has a QR code? You say, what is that? We put those up for all kinds of things. Well, it's because you can hold your phone up with your camera, and if you're not a member, if you're not part of, quote, Club J, P, PFC, if you're not a member of this church, and you know Jesus, and you want to become part of this church and help us do what God's called us to, then this is really what it's about. Just take the, it'll take you right. Every week, someone will stop me and say, how to become a member? I want to join. Ever since we've been doing this series, somebody's asked me every single week, well, I said, well, let's put a QR code, and it'll take you right to where you need to go. It's really very simple. You don't have to get any kind of special tattoo unless you just want to. I mean, if you want to, that's fine, yeah. You don't, have to, you don't have to, you know, sign over your bank account. We're not going to ask for your W-2s, anything like that. But we want to know who's saying, I want to be a son of this house. God's got purpose for me. And maybe you've been burned by the church before. Welcome to the club. We talked about that before, right? We want to do what God's called us to do. And I'm telling you, I'm so strong on this because I know what God has in store and how it's going to bless you and your family. So if you haven't done that, would you just take a moment and do that? This week, if you have any questions, let's... And look, if you need somebody to print it out for you because you don't do anything online, that's okay. We're good there. We, we can print it out for you. We want you to walk as a son so we can do what God's called us to do. I cannot think of anything more exciting than more blessed than to have a church family in this day and time. Amen? A time when many people are jumping around, going here and there. I'm thankful for those who want to be changed and made, remade in the image of Christ so we can grow into what He wants us to be, to fulfill His purposes and to receive all He has for us. He says, I do that in context of your church. How many are ready for everything God has for you? I mean, you really would like, maybe you don't even understand all this. You just say, you know what? I really want all God has for me and not what the enemy has for me. I want everything God has for me. Would you just raise both hands? I mean, let's vote twice. You can't always vote twice. Vote twice. I'm, I mean, I want everything. Would you stand to your feet right now? And we just hold those hands up. Logan's going to lead us in time of worship. But I want to pray for you and your family and for your influence and what God wants to do in you and through you. Father, I thank you for every man and woman, every student, every child that calls praise home. Maybe we're visiting today. Lord, that you're calling in sons. 
Lord, not for my benefit, not to make me look better, better, not to make our church anything except more like Jesus. Lord, that I'm excited about those who will, will say, yes, I want to serve. I want to do what you call me to, Jesus, because we want to grow into the things of God and be the bride of Christ so you want us to. I bless every home. I pray for it for your word just to go forth, Lord, that you'd find good ground in our hearts, and Lord, you begin to continue to transform us. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Now keep those hands up, and let's worship together for a few minutes. Come on. Thanks for joining us today, and we hope you'll tune in next time. If you want more information about Praise Family Church, or if you think you might like to visit us sometimes, you can find out a lot of information at praisefamily.church. Maybe you'd like to partner with us to make these broadcasts possible. You can text the word GIVING to 31 3131 or you can mail an offering to the address you see on the screen but whatever you do we want to continue to be a blessing to you we want to be a help to you and we want to let you see that God has got great things in store for you and he has a plan for your life we hope you'll continue to tune in and you'll be a part as Praise Family Church continues to tell the good news around the world